Hey, this is the Provoke Prawn, and here I'm comparing the Corsair Darkstar Wireless with the Rocket Cone XB Air. Now, these are ever so slightly different mics, but they also have a number of features that make them comparable, and they have a similar sort of ergonomic shape and design to them, the fitment in the hand, and access to loads and loads of buttons. They both have 15 programmable buttons, for example, and they also have optical switches and some nice features that make them worth talking about. In this video, I'm going to show them side by side and talk about the differences between them, what I like and don't like about them, the features and highlights and specs and more. And I'm also going to link down in the description to the full review so you can find out more about each of them. I'll go into a lot more depth, but here I want to talk about what's similar about them. So you can see if you put them side by side, they're similar in shape. They both have USB-C charging. They both have 2.4 gigahertz and Bluetooth options and theoretically deliver a very nice experience. And I must say, I do like both these mice, and that's one of the reasons I'm comparing them. They have a nice shape to them with plenty of space for your thumb to fit nicely and an access to masses of buttons. You've got loads of side thumb buttons, as well as DPI buttons, profile switching buttons, and other things too. They've got a nice comfortable fit, good grip, and a nice design. Now the Konex Pierre, as you'll see, has some striking RGB lighting, and it definitely wins in that department of so RGB is your thing. The Cone XP is the one to go for because Corsairs is a bit underwhelming by comparison, but they are both wonderful mice. So I'm going to kickstart with the Cone XP Air and just talk a bit about that and show off some of the highlights. You'll see that it comes with its own charging dock, for example. Now the Cone XP claims up to 100 hours of battery life, but take that with a grain of salt because it is mostly on Bluetooth. And that's always the big claim that the manufacturers make is maximum battery life, but it's usually over Bluetooth. But the bonus of this mouse is that it does come with its own charging dock, which also doubles as a sort of range extender for the 2.4 gigahertz dongle. So you can plug that into there, put the dock nearby, near your mouse, and then just pop your mouse on it when you need to charge it or when you finish gaming and you're stepping away from your PC. So obviously you rarely need to plug this in, even if the claim of 100 hours isn't necessarily accurate, it still does last for quite some time. And then you're rarely charging it anyway, because you're always just docking it when you've finished using it, as long as you remember to do that. You'll also see on the underside, it has a nice little dock for the dongle when not in use. So if you need to store that for any reason, and you've got some nice slick feet as well. Now on the side, you have mass of access to various different thumb buttons. You can see those sort of four buttons up there, but also one down by a tiny little thumb rest at the bottom. That bottom one is the easy shift button. And this is the big difference between the two mice is that easy shift button opens up an extra layer of button programmability within Rockout Swarm software, which means you can have up to 29 actions which is nuts. Now the Corsair Darkstar Wireless is an MNO and MOBA mouse, and that's what it's aimed at. But I've been using it for FPS and other games and found it satisfactory in there as well. You'll see that this is a very nice mouse. As I said, it does have some RGB lighting, but it's not as striking, but you do have other highlights, little things. So a well thought out button cluster on the left hand side, for example, you can see you've got a nice space for your thumb where that's going to sit and then you've got access to multiple buttons around there. It also has nice slick underside and again, storage for your dongle. Now both mice have Bluetooth connectivity. The Darkstar Wireless has Bluetooth 4.2 and you can easily switch into that mode and then connect it up to something like a Steam Deck or whatever laptop, whatever you want and then use it really easily. With the Slipstream Wireless dongle connected, you get a much faster, low latency connection to PC, so that's preferable. In the IQ software, you can program all sorts of things. You've got masses of side buttons to program, much the same way you have with a Cone XP. There are 15 buttons that you can customize the action on, and then you can go into those and set them up. You can see that you've got macros, media playback, app launchers, mouse presses, keyboard strokes, whatever you want, you can program all sorts of actions in here. One of the things that make it stand out though is probably the tilt gesturing. Now I found this a bit hit and miss, but it is interesting. You can see that you can tilt left and right, forward and back, and you can program it for different things. I used it and set it up so that it would allow me to block in Chivalry 2, for example, by just tilting the mouse backwards, but you can program all sorts of actions into that and then use it in a variety of different ways. So both these mice are really interesting and they both offer optical switches as well. So you've got a good fast actuation from it. You can see you've got left and right click in the mouse wheel too. So you've got some good action program in there and both of them offer the same logic there. So you've got absolutely loads of button customization and options in there. And I found them both satisfying. The Cone XP Air has the advantage of that easy shift functionality. So if you press that tiny little button on the thumb rest, 
you can then access other programmable actions, up to 29 actions for these buttons. This is pretty neat, but it is a little bit fiddly. For example, I found I couldn't really press it with the bottom of my thumb and then reach the other buttons, but obviously it's gonna vary from hand to hand, so depending on your hand size. The design of both is interesting though. You've got easy access to loads of buttons on here. For example, the Corsair mouse makes it a lot simpler and more comfortable. It's also worth noting that Corsair has quick strike setup, so basically a very tensioned spring, so there's minimal button press before it actuates on the main switches. So that's an advantage that that mouse has. And also this mouse has the advantage of 2000 Hertz polling rate over the Slipstream wireless versus 1000 Hertz on the standard wireless mouse and on the Cone XP. So specs wise, it does stand up and it is worth checking out the specs linked in the description and obviously as i said be sure to head over to the reviews to find out more and see an in-depth look at each of them and all the things that you can do with them and stick around now for a sound test to hear the two side by side You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos, you might well find them interesting or useful, and most importantly, have a great life.